Here we are at Kanapaha Botanical Gardens in the vinery, looking at all the gorgeous vines covering these arbors. Today we're going to talk a lot about vines. We'll talk about all the benefits that you can get from vines, from covering up bad views to maybe even bringing some color or maybe even a little food to your table. We'll talk about choosing the best vine for your location. We'll talk about even using vines in containers and maybe even how to plant a vine in a container so you can move it around your landscape. Vines add a lot to our landscapes, so join me on a walk through the vinery here at Kanapaha Botanical Gardens. Vines can be used so many different ways. Here we are standing at the entrance of an arbor, and that's one great way to use vines. It's a way to create an entrance way or kind of a transition from one area of the landscape to another. And when we think about landscaping, we should think about creating outdoor rooms. And a great way to do that, to transition from one room to the next, could be an arbor. An arbor like this one, covered with these gorgeous pipe vines, uh, could really create some, some incredible cooling too. So when, when we're in our landscape and we're thinking about this hot, sunny landscape, maybe we can think about adding an arbor for a little cooling area of the porch. Some other things we can do with some of our vines. Um, I'm a big fan of using trellises. And uh, trellises are fantastic for utilizing, uh, for using in bare areas or up against a bare wall perhaps. And here this, uh, this trellis is easy to put in a container or up against a, a flat bare wall and very quickly you can get that vertical element. We can't forget about the flowers. Flowers are fantastic and Florida is filled with so many blooming vines. And as I mentioned, this pipe vine is pretty stunning. Uh, it's, it's amazing, it's unusual, the colors are, are well, different than most people would ordinarily think of, but it really creates some interest in the landscape, and that's what I really like about this. But there's so many bright, vibrant colors, and even some of those with fragrance. Other things you can do with vines. Think about covering a stump, maybe. You have an ugly stump in, in the yard, instead of worrying about digging it out or, or cutting it out, maybe you can plant a vine on it, and it becomes this beautiful, flowing mass of green and whatever color blooms you choose on the plant that you choose. Uh, other things you can do, you can soften fences. Think about that, the chain link fence becomes from this ugly metal uh, contraption, it becomes this beautiful flowing green vine. Well as you're going through trying to pick out a vine for your landscape, you need to think about a lot of different things. You need to select the right vine for your spot. One thing we're trying to teach at University of Florida now is choosing the right plant for the right location. So consider about the lighting at, at the area that you are and also what area of the state you're in so that you choose a vine that doesn't freeze or one that tolerates the heat if you happen to be in South Florida. So it's real important you pick the right plant for the right place. Here I'm sitting next to this beautiful passion vine and I love the color. Look at that intricate bloom. Uh, beautiful, beautiful shades. It comes in purples, comes in whites, a lot of different uh, colors. There's even a red passion vine that you could get and they put on a lot of gorgeous color. And it gives us an opportunity to, to showcase a little bit about how vines grow. And vines grow and cling to whatever they're growing on by a number of different techniques. And here this passion vine has a structure called tendrils. And these tendrils um, are actually structures that cling on to whatever they touch. And it's through friction and they just kind of wrap around and that's the way, uh, the method they use to hold on to things. Some of our vines have rooting structures, uh, small roots that will actually root into whatever they're growing on. It could be on a concrete surface, could be on a wooden surface as well. Some of those are, are things like ivy or creeping fig. Some of our vines are twining and will just wrap around uh, whatever structure they're on. It could be a trellis, could be an arbor, and then some of our vines just kind of sprawl and wrap around and grow on top of themselves. An example of that might be bougainvillea. Vines are so important for all the great reasons we've talked about during this video, and one of those th things certainly is to create a little bit of view barrier and a way to get your eye moving upwards and create that vertical, vertical landscape a little bit. So I like to, to utilize vines and containers so that I can move that container from place to place, maybe decorate a deck, maybe a patio, or maybe even a pool area, and you can move it around to create different looks along your landscape. And so today we're going to demonstrate planting a, a container. One of the important things when thinking about any sort of container is to choose the right type of container. And it doesn't matter whether it's clay or plastic or whatever it's made of, just make sure it has drainage holes. And this one actually has numerous drainage holes along the bottom, so whatever you choose, make sure it has plenty of good drainage. 
we also want to select a good quality potting soil and potting media. And this one happens to be a lightweight soilless mix and uh, works very well. So these are some considerations you might want to have on hand. You're also going to need some sort of structure for your vine to grow on. And in this case, I'm selecting uh, a nice PVC trellis. Uh, this won't rot and it'll last for uh, the life of this plant, certainly. Okay, when we're planting a vine or any sort of plant in a container, we'll start number one by adding some soil to the base of our, our container. We do this to, to make sure that we're, we're trying to uh, get the right depth of the plant in the container. And with any plant, whether it's in a container or in the ground, we want to make sure not to plant it any deeper than it was in the existing container because uh, any soil built up around the stem could actually cause that plant to rot. So whenever you're transplanting something, it's good to kind of loosen up around the pot. Kind of, how do you get things out of the pot? Well, you kind of loosen up, put, press all the way around it, and hopefully, if all goes well, it should slip right out of the pot. So we'll take this one and sure enough, look at, it's a good time to examine the roots. Look at our roots and we've got a nice, uh, nice complement of roots along this root ball. They're nice and white and healthy roots. So we've got, us, got ourselves a nice healthy plant. We'll set this in our container and uh, that, the depth that looks real good in this, in this shot. And it's a good idea to start working with our trellis now and get our trellis into this container. And we'll position this down here. And then you, you fill in, backfill all the way around with more of our potting media and make sure to water it in afterwards. When we get this around the landscape, then it's important to, to think about uh, how we're gonna care for this afterwards. Use good general purpose fertilizers and when the soil surface begins to dry, then it's time to water it. And you'll have success with any vine you plant if you follow these rules. Well, here we've got our completed container, and this is a mandevilla vine. I love the beautiful pink flowers on this mandevilla. And we, we twined some of the vines around, got them started a little bit, uh, got them ready to climb, and very quickly this trellis will be covered with beautiful pink blooms. We talked about a lot of things today. We talked about choosing the right vine for the right place. Remember, right plant, right place is all, always very important. We talked about how to use vines and some of the uses for them, and we finished up by talking a little bit about how to properly plant your vine. So hopefully you can take these messages home and have success with your vertical landscape at home.